So today's topic is about uh, uh, air, air supply. Today's topic is about air supply, EP break, and how the EP break is actually controlled. Right? So let's get on with that. And uh, please uh, 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 mute your microphone when you are not speaking. Right? Are ha, Sarma ji, you are visible today. Right, but your microphone. Good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, ji. Good morning. So okay, uh, this is the last class. This is the last class and uh, let me repeat one more thing. Uh, train 18, uh, it was that doubt was raised by one of the participants that immediately if the rakes are given to the division, how they are going to maintain. So don't worry about that because uh, the aggregator Medha, Medha server drives would depute uh, a considerable number of people to take care of the maintenance initially. So you will not have any problem and most of the things would uh, go for AMC. First, there, that will be on uh, warranty, and after the warranty, it will go for AMC. So the majority of the things that we are going to deal with uh, would be uh, would be physical in nature. So you even if you don't understand about the electronics or the or the communication protocol or the working of computer, uh, it is better that we understand that, and that is why there is a there is this kind of classes to give you just first hand uh, introduction and touch about it. Uh, but uh, initially, even if you don't know, you can still maintain the train. There is no problem about that, right? So don't worry. Even if the trains are actually handed over to the divisions, the only thing is the managerial thing you should be more content with, and that would be where are your spare train? If your train, are you aware that uh, this uh, where the train city uh, train 18 is run from Shakur Basti uh, from Delhi? Uh, Shakur Basti, Basti, it is being maintained at uh, from Delhi. Uh, they are keeping uh, uh, one full train spare for that, right? So <laughs> one Tejas they are keeping. Uh, this, this is Vande Bharat uh, train set. One LHB rake they are keeping separate uh, for uh, as a spare. So if it doesn't run, they 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 have another train to run straight away. So. Uh, Initially, uh, these kind of things will be of more uh, more concern to us, the people who are actually involved in the maintenance. As now, okay, now there are sufficient people. Let's start air supply. Right off, we will start with the air supply and starting with the uh, least significant. It is not least significant as such. Let me make it full screen. Okay, uh, is this full screen visible to everybody? I hope so. Uh, let, yes, me start yes, recording. No, no, no. let me start record. Achha, recorder has already started. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> so the things that we are going to discuss in uh, one and a half hour, I believe, is auxiliary air supply system, right, for pantograph equipment, then uh, air supply equipment, brake control equipment. Mechanical brake actuating component, right? And including driver's brake control equipment. And the brake application equipment, basically this, the previous one and this one, they are more or less uh, intertwined. Uh, then wheel slide protection. Probably you already are aware about wheel slide protection. Uh, anybody who is not aware about uh, wheel slide protection or uh, WSPA available in LHB coaches, anybody? I'm asking exception. Who is not aware about that uh, WSP? If you are not aware, don't worry about that. We will we will discuss a little. Otherwise, we will just skip over. So, okay, I take it that uh, everybody is well aware about uh, uh, yeah. wheel slide protection equipment that is available in LHB coaches. So we will only discuss uh, what is the difference between these two. Okay. There and here. And then part of the air, it, it's not much air suspension. It is. It has already been discussed in your bogey class, right? Uh, but uh, we we have sensor input from the uh, from the air spring for brake application. Are you aware? Uh, or it would have been discussed that. Uh, uh, the the retarding force or the braking force is dependent on your coach weight. 
the heavier the coach is you require more retarding force the lighter is the coach is you need to you know reduce the brake cylinder pressure so for that uh, the brake system uh, takes its feedback from the air spring because there is a there is a leveling mechanism available so if the coach is heavy uh, the air spring will will have a higher pre air pressure and uh, therefore that can be used to to uh, to uh, bias the pressure uh, during application of air brake. So now let, let's let discuss all of that. Now this is the auxiliary air supply for pantograph equipment. Why auxiliary supply is required? Normally if you have MR pressure, main air reservoir pressure, you can use that pressure to rise or lower the pantograph. Pantograph is used for uh, collecting uh, 25 kV uh, OHE. Uh, when the train is dead, normally when the train is working, at that time you have MR, main air reservoir pressure, which is about 8 to 10.5 kg at max, uh, 8.5 to 10 actually, that, that's, the, that's the range. So your pantograph is actually uh, air pressure operated, uh, air pressure actuated, I should say. Uh, you can you can lower and rise using main air reservoir, but when the when you are just starting the train, the train is dead during the night and morning. You come back and uh, try to you know boot it up, power it up. At that time, you require air pressure. So for initial air pressure, there is a very very small a self-contained compressor with a 25 liter reservoir is provided, right? At the at at beneath beneath the uh, driving end of trailing car, on the same coach where the pantograph is located, in the same coach. This is this is the photograph. This I have taken uh, in Chennai. Uh, this 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 was the train being built. Uh, the third rake. Uh, it is from that. So there is a self-contained uh, compressor, which creates the pressure just for operation of pantograph. So once uh, your pantograph is up and you get the electricity and then you can run rest of the equipment. This is this is operated uh, using 110 volt DC. So it is battery operated and this motor is also permanent magnet motor. And this permanent magnet is one of the one of the uh, latest design uh, DC motor. So okay we still have eco nilesh uh, if you are not speaking could you please switch off uh, uh, nilesh tiwari switch off your microphone yeah thanks so uh, this is the circuit uh, i have shown you uh, actual location of the compressor but uh, once it is uh, dismantled and kept outside the, the the compressor looks like this it is sourced by the north nor is the contractor for air brake system so both the compressor this auxiliary compressor as well as your uh, uh, main compressor they are they are sourced from the nor along with the air brake system itself so uh, how many this uh, small auxiliary compressor should be available in a train anybody uh, come on each, each for uh, each, each, each dtcc Home, yes, uh, each each basic unit will have one. Each basic, so basic unit, sir. Every every uh, every panto will have one. You can say that way, right? So okay. That is the trailer car. Yes, of course, in the same place. Now you can see here. This uh, uh, let me have a pen. Okay. If you look here. My arrow should be visible to you, right? Yes, sir. 8.5 to 10 kg, this is main air reservoir. And we have discussed in one of my classes that main air reservoir is, a, is, a, is one of the train line pipe which is running from the first uh, DTC to the last DTC. So it is available throughout. To this main, uh, main air reservoir, all the four main compressors are feeding, right? So it is equalized main air reservoir. So this from main air reservoir in normal, normally when uh, this is a 
sorry about that, but this is one of the uh, major problem with. Uh, I simply lose mouse uh, at times. So, okay, uh, but still I will go for annotate. Uh, okay, so how the normal uh, airflow works if it is from the main air reservoir like this, there is a non-return wall, there is a, there is a uh, test, this is actually a test port, right, and pressure sensor, okay. Then it goes, there is a filter, online filter, then there is 25 liter reservoir, which we'll always have, right? And this goes to Pento, the control is separately. It is just about uh, the supply of the air and also the vacuum circuit breaker, right? So main air reservoir is available through, through this route. It, it should be clear, okay, now, when there is no main air reservoir, at that time, this is the compressor. This is the compressor, baby compressor, small compressor, right? Uh, I have. Yes, anything? Again, that fills into uh, this same, uh, uh, same this auxiliary reservoir, and then uh, the compressed air is available for both vacuum circuit breaker as well as pantograph. So if there is no main air reservoir, and this is this is basically it is uh, it is a check wall, so that circuit becomes isolated. And this is how uh, it's a very very small simple circuit, right? It takes only 140 seconds to completely fill up uh, uh, your uh, uh, this 25 liter uh, tank. So 140 seconds is nothing, it's just two minutes, isn't it? So, same thing again happened with my mouse, okay. So if I draw the line, it is much easy, right? Any question so far? In in uh, dead condition, uh, main reservoir uh, pipe will be having the pressure, no, sir. No, we we assume that it will eventually leak out. So even if the train is uh, kept as say siding for few hours, a uh, probably main air reservoir pressure would still be available. But if you leave it for twenty four hours, then uh, the most probably all the main air reservoir would have leaked out. See, uh, these, these are pipeline connections, these joints, they are so numerous, you cannot make anything completely leak proof. So very, very little, uh, very, very little uh, leak is available everywhere, which is not even detectable. And now when these things, you know, multiply together with uh, hundreds of joints, your main air reservoir is always leaking, always. You have your, say any rake, you apply the brake and uh, leave it in that condition. After some time, you will find your uh, there is no uh, there is no compressed air. Locomotive, right? You shut down the locomotive, leave it aside, and after some time, there won't be any 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 compressed air available in that. Of course, one two three hours it may be available. Beyond that, just leave it for twenty four hours. You won't have. That's that's my point. If you still have residual main air uh, reservoir pressure, you operate using that. No problem, you can. But if you don't have anything, it is just dead, no, no air, then uh, you require this, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir, thank you. Okay, this is a, achha, this, this is again uh, recurring uh, theme here, uh, not this compact, oil free. All the compressors are here, here, all the compressors here don't require any oil. The people from the locomotive maintenance side, and some of you are available from loco side, that, like we, uh, we discussed the last time, you know that uh, availability of oil is uh, another one big problem. Uh, it's not a big problem, it's something to look, uh, look for. This is something that you should be careful when the locomotive runs for uh, a, lo a long number of days outside. When the schedule attention, it uh, you know it is it is uh, extended, then compressor oil is one of the thing you should be concerned about. Here, all the 
compressor are oil free absolutely no oil even even i also want to see by dismantling it ki how it is they said there are teflon rings the ceiling is made of teflon uh, uh, coated material and it doesn't require any kind of lubrication at all ever so uh, we have seen some of the such compressor which require replacement of the components uh, quite frequently um, you you will have to change most of the major uh, 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 the components which which wear out in 6 month or so they say that is not required in fact main air compressor uh, needs to be you know attended after 3 years 6 years and so on we will see about that uh, one of such uh, recommendation i have copied it here so it will be available so it is uh, it is something which is uh, very new of uh, the latest technology which we are not using in railway so far okay now okay so this is the technical data intake air stream is 70 liters per minute uh, maximum uh, pressure is 8 bar and working temperature range is just minimum minus 40 they have put that is just for uh, showing off actually the, the the thing that we are concerned with is plus 50 degree because we our 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 component reach that temperature okay lubricating oil not not required power supply 110 volt dc electric power is uh, only uh, 790 watt less than a kilowatt it is only 1 hp right and filling time jo hai uh, for 25 liter reservoir at 8 bar is 140 seconds so it has it has been made in such a way that in uh, very little time your pantograph is ready for operation so 140 second is nothing it is just 2 minutes right now coming to the air supply equipment it is available in uh, dtc and ndtc right so how many compressors we have already talked about how many main compressors are available four four yes each each basic unit has got either dtc or ndtc it is fitted beneath the dtc and ndtc it is here actually uh, in fact when we visited icf it was not available right this is the bracket for that this is the 200 liter uh, reservoir right this is uh, this runs using uh, ox power supply you know that uh, main main your uh, line and traction transformer uh, that has got uh, six winding in the propulsion circuit that must have been discussed that uh, there are four motor windings and two auxiliary windings uh, so this auxiliary windings are used for uh, auxiliary converter and from auxiliary converter uh, 415 volt three phase ac is uh, supplied and then uh, this three phase ac is used for powering this uh, main compressor okay this is the circuitry uh, this is my annotation all right okay this is the compressor right this is the uh, trend line pipe for mr the bottom most blue color blue color is recurring uh, phenomena uh, in all the schematics to so main line main air reservoir that is uh, 8.5 to 10 kg that's what is blue line everywhere in all the schematics okay now this is the uh, right so this is the schematic this is the main main compressor there is a hose right there is a safety valve 12 bar then there is a air dryer it is it is a it is a uh, must required unit it must be working it's a twin tower type 4 minute uh, recycle time one charging one uh, uh, this thing uh, one uh, drying then uh, there is a check valve there is a another safety valve physical safety valve 
there is 200 liter reservoir right there is an air drain unit uh, that is water drain unit and finally it feeds directly through a cutout cock of course you can isolate it to main uh, mr pipe of course this this thing is in driver's cabin this is a dual it is just shown here it is in driver's cabin to show main uh, this this why they have shown bc pressure there because it is a it is a compound gauge so a single gauge shows there are two needles different needles are colored differently and they show different pressure so it is in driver's compartment right so this is this is the basic schematic of uh, uh, of uh, your uh, main compressor right so there there are some technical uh, details about that so its air delivery is 845 liter per minute it's 28 uh, cubic uh, foot type Some, somebody was asking what is cfm all right something like 20 28 or 29 okay 845 liter per minute plus minus 6% right 1455 rpm it is because it is 50 hertz 50 hertz so 1500 rpm uh, with some slip it is 1455 rpm service temperature range is again uh, up to 50 degree centigrade uh, it is a two stage compressor so there are three pistons there are three pistons two two low pressure pistons and one uh, high pressure piston so its uh, working pressure is 10 bar right and its weight is about 200 kg the whole thing so there are elastic mounting it is mounted beneath the beneath the coach okay there is one more thing is one more thing just uh, it is available in our uh, new design all the compressor there is a vacuum indicator agar aapka air filter air filter is choked at that time you will have an indication that it will the next to air filter it will create vacuum and then you can you can just uh, change the air filter it is it is the service indication right so uh, again as i said it is a recurring theme ki, this is this oil free compressor right okay now uh, we will just uh, look at some technical uh, info maintenance information in fact and i wanted to point out uh, this is the only maintenance information i have kept just to show you that uh, every 3000 operating hours or after two years you are just going to replace the wearing part of drain valve and uh, every 12,000 operating hours or eight years, you are going to actually overall the electric motor or the compressor. So even though it doesn't use any oil, it will still run for eight years as far as OEM uh, literature is concerned. Right? That will be a big relief for people who are actually maintaining the compressor in locomotives. Okay, so just wanted to point that out. The rest of the maintenance portion, just leave it right now. This is the safety valve. It is a it is a physical safety valve. Its size is slightly smaller, and it is uh, slightly better made, better built. Again, it is whole thing is sourced by the North. Uh, North. So it is simply pressure based. This this thing you can use to adjust the pressure at which it will open. There is a knob which you can turn using a spanner to create the spring pressure. Now higher the spring pressure is, at higher uh, pressure it would open. So you can set it at what pressure you want it to open. How how do you adjust it, right? And uh, that uh, main air reservoir is connected here. When the pressure goes beyond uh, certain uh, uh, set preset pressure, then uh, this uh, the compressed air actually against the spring pressure it opens the piston and then air releases. It's a very simple construction, right? Now even. See the components are designed very well. This one, this one is again one of the very very uh, well designed uh, 
train valve, we also call it auto drain valve in locomotive. It is the same thing. It is auto drain valve. It is pilot air operated. And in this case, uh, there is one silencer also. Next to it, there is a silencer. So you, you don't even hear that kind of sharp. Uh, uh, se, jo log locomotive maintain karte hai, you remember the sound of uh, drain valves? Anybody? Yes, sir. Even very, coach also, sir, it will come. Yeah, it is, it is very, very sharp uh, and it is distinct. You listen it from a distance and you know what it is. So no more such thing. And again, uh, it is very short. So how it is, uh, if you look at the design here, let me, let me mark it. This is connected to uh, your main air reservoir. Physically, it is at the bottom. Why? Because of course, the water always condenses and uh, gets accumulated at the bottom of the tank. So this is where it is connected to your uh, main air reservoir, right? In normal, in normal mode, the water keeps on dropping uh, through here and getting accumulated on both side. Why? Because it is always open, the other side, right? This bottom side, the bottom portion, this, this portion, this portion is closed. There's nothing here, right? It is, there, there is a valve actually, which is closed at that time. So the water gets filled up at the bottom of this, this, this body. Now, your pilot air pressure to operate that, Again, it is electronics controlled through a solenoid, comes through this J, G, G port, jet, right? So once the pilot air pressure comes in, it lifts this, uh, this piston, right? But uh, simultaneously when this piston is lifted, this also gets closed. So your main air reservoir doesn't leak like uh, in our old design locomotive. Abhi jab ye chalu hota hai, main air reservoir keeps, uh, you know, exhausting for quite some time. It is not that. It closes the main air reservoir because the pressure is already there. Okay. My allocate, okay. The pressure is already in this chamber, right? Pressure is already in this chamber. When this opens, this port opens, uh, the, the accumulated water and only the amount of air that is available inside this body only goes out. So not from the main air reservoir. So it is a very small quantity of uh, uh, air uh, that leaks out along with the water. And there is a muffler next to it. So even the sound is muffled. So again, as I said, very well designed. And then there is a manual, uh, there, is a, there is a manual uh, drain valve. Of course, when you, when, you, when you manually open it, right? Uh, at that time, it will be, all, all the ports will be opened. And then, of course, uh, till the time you keep it open, main air reservoir will keep draining along with water. If you want to, you can use that. But normally, it is operated electronically. Oh, a second. Keep losing my mouse. Right. Now, next is, next is air dryer. Now, air dryer is must because once you compress the air, a, a, a good amount of water, uh, the, the air, humidity increases. Now, this uh, water, higher humidity, water particulate, uh, all those things are uh, really not very healthy for all the valves. They go, they choke the valve, uh, they, 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 they change the, uh, the way our all the pneumatic valves work, right? Their, uh, their performance curve gets shifted. So we need to somehow reduce the uh, water from the air. So there is an air dryer. So there is, it is desiccant filled. It's a chemically filled. So there is a, there is a charging and uh, there is a drying uh, part. So one of the desiccant in that air, air is passing. Another one of the desiccant will be charging. Basically, it is, it is removing, the, uh, removing the water using air pressure. So it is four minute cycle, one tower, second tower, first tower, second tower, first tower, second tower. It, it keeps on recycling for uh, uh, every four minutes. So there is an inlet, there is an outlet. Uh, there are indicator to, uh, uh, to indicate whether the desiccant is still good or not. Uh, there are test ports and that's about it. Again, there is a, there is a muffler here. 
Now, air that comes out of your air dryer is also very sharp sounding, very distinct sounding. In this case, there is a air uh, there is a sound muffler even in this case. So the sound is not completely eliminated, but it is muffled to a uh, to a great extent. Now this LTJ the air dryer model, which is uh, it will be somewhere it will be written you know 015.1, 0.5.2, 0. 0.015.0. 0. So there is a very very slight variation that it is being used even in the literature. These numbers keep changing a little. The last digit. Anyhow, so this is about the air dryer, right? Uh, working pressure is 10.5 bar, of course, 50, 50 degrees centigrade, right? Air inlet temperature maximum it goes up to 60 degree. Beyond that, uh, there is no guarantee sufficient uh, uh, desiccant uh, uh, will function. Now, uh, relative humidity has to be less than 35% on the outlet, right? So normally the inlet is something like 97, 98% what goes in, what comes out is 30, less than 35%. Cycle time is of course uh, four minutes, 35 kg is the weight. Desiccant charge is uh, uh, 4.36 kg. Now, no special maintenance is required because it itself charges and uh, dries, right? And after uh, two years, uh, certain checks are required. But uh, desiccant change is based on the indication only. If the if the if the uh, air in your area where your uh, train is operating is very very humid, then uh, desiccant will get exhausted. That also is, I think, two to three years. It is good enough for. And uh, in the dry weather, if you are, if your trains are running, uh, desiccant will be uh, good enough to last for about almost four years. Okay, we ask that, and uh, pressure switch uh, must be changed, exchanged after working of ten million cycles. So okay, fine, that is uh, good enough. That means uh, air dryer is more or less uh, maintenance free. Now, any any question till now? So we uh, this this unit which provides you with compressed air for brake system, compressed air for your pantograph, and uh, dryer per version uh, means how the air dryer uh, is connected to it, how it works. Those things also we have discussed. Its location, कहाँ पर ये fit होता है? All those things we have covered in very short, actually. I would have rather liked you, uh, like to take you to its physical location and actually show you, but you will get the rake, you will see it in any case. So, all right, okay. So, any question, anybody? Sir, in, uh, sir, in uh, auto train wall, you said that Z yeah. uh, is uh, pilot pressure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand, sir. Pilot pressure means. See, it is auto drain wall. Let me go there. Okay. Auto drain wall requires to drain the accumulated uh, moisture from the main air reservoir at a fixed uh, cyclic time. Okay. That much is clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That means within a fixed time, cyclic that is, it will keep on repeating itself. A, a wall must open so the accumulated moisture can come out, right? Now, in order to open this wall, it is a pressure actuated wall, right? Okay. So, okay. so, so there is a main wall, and there is a another uh, piston and chamber which actually operates the main wall, that the center portion, right? Okay. 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 Now that is pressure actuated, so from somewhere the pressure must come here. Now this pressure can can come from the main air reservoir itself. By your okay. main air reservoir, may already eight kg. It can come, but somebody should open the wall, isn't it? If you open the wall, yes, say sir. your your main air reservoir is here, right? And you have one valve here, right? Your manual valve. You open the valve, and then pressure goes here, 
and operates that. So you open the valve, uh, your uh, auto drain valve works. You yes, close the yes, valve, yes, auto drain valve goes to isolate mode. Clear? Now this this manual valve, you can put a solenoid there and operate electronically, right? You can put a solenoid valve yes, sir. and operate yes, it sir. electronically. And once it is controlled by electronics, okay. then you can have some counter, some computer circuit, which can control that. Yes. yes. And in fact, that is the case here. Uh oh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, let me get my pen back. This is the solenoid. This is the main air reservoir which is feeding into. And the same thing, it branches out, goes to a valve, which is controlled by a solenoid. And this is your auto train valve, A10. This is muffler for that. Yes, sir. This is your reservoir, yes, 200 sir. liter. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, one more question on auto drain valve. Yes, please. Uh, sir, can you go back to the slide? Which one? Where auto drain valve is? Auto drain valve. Yes. Okay. Right. Here, if you manually drain this uh, by using the manual drain valve, the yes. left hand chamber and the right hand chamber are separated by a lowermost valve, right? No, no, no. There is no. It is. It is circular. Uh, it is. It is circular. So the okay. center body. It's. It's circular. So it is all connected. All right. Okay. So if we manually the... drain this, uh, yeah. Sir, if we manually drain this, then the whole chamber will be drained out. Not only whole chamber, the wall will not get actuated. The center wall okay. it will remain closed. Ye jo hai na, yes, ye sir. Aur yes, se aap isko khol denge. So the MR will get discharged in that case. Yeah, MR will it will keep discharging till the time yes. you keep the manual wall open. Okay. So if you exhaust karna hai, kuch test karna hai, uh, you are you are so matlab hamare yahan to technician aisa hote the ki haath laga ke fir haath ko sungte the ki bhai usse unko pata chal jata tha ki main air reservoir ke andar condition kaisa hai ki aapke paas agar great technicians hai to you can do all sort of things here right okay sir yeah. okay right So, okay, now let us uh, go to our uh, main, main uh, so-called, uh, the real discussion about the EP brake system, how it works. Sir, yeah, now, in coaches, ke andar, ye, MR, hai, MR ke saath feed pipe bhi ho ga, kya? Nahin, 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 nahin. Uh, what is the purpose of, uh, kya, Sharma ji, aapne pucha, kya? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what is the purpose of heat pipe? Uh, again, I'm not asking you for all, I'm just asking you for all. This, the others also may have this doubt. So, what is the purpose of heat pipe, Sharma ji? Sir, heat pipe is okay. It does heat, but it has like in the conventional coaches, there is a pressure of 5-6 kg. So, it will stay in the same way. It will stay in the same way. It will stay in the same way. It will stay in the uh -huh. brake break controllers ko separate karta hai aur uske andar it, it will ensure quick yeah. application quick release sir ha it it ensures quick application and quick release so what happens if you in a single pipe system when you are using only brake pressure so the same thing is used for uh, uh, application and release of brake by modulating the brake pipe pressure so mm -hmm. when you apply the brake uh, when you apply the brake you reduce the brake pipe pressure at that time probably your brake pipe pressures are uh, uh, very little or none, but you can bring the brake pipe pressure to zero also. So at that time, there must be a reservoir which, which must supply uh, the air for actuation of physical actuation of brakes, cylinders, right? Yeah, that, that's when you are actually question, applying the brake, that's, that's the purpose. And now you do it several times, you do it several times, then your reservoir would, you know, deplete. So in order to refill your reservoir, you provided a second connection that uh, that supplies with 6 kg, which has to be more than brake pipe pressure. The logic for that 6 kg is you, it has to be more than brake. It is a standard that we have arrived at. If you keep it 7 kg, what will happen? If you keep, keep it 8 kg, what will happen? Feed pipe, nothing. Because in any case, you, only thing is your pipeline, your joints, your main air reservoir, uh, sorry, your uh, auxiliary reservoir, 
they they should be able to withstand that pressure whether it is 6 kg or 7 kg or 8 kg or 10 kg they should be able to withstand that pressure so feed pipe you can keep as 7 kg also or 8 kg also now there is a universal standard that we have we have applied uh, as a standard so we keep it 6 kg if you keep it 7 kg what will happen it will work for, fantastically no problem here there is a main air reservoir itself you consider main air reservoir as feed pipe with uh, uh, with uh, 10 kg that's it okay sir. right right sir. okay thank you any other question on this sir i have one question yes please Sir, whatever fitting we are using in compressed uh, pressure line, uh, like single ferrule fitting or double ferrule fitting or uh, threaded joint? I'm not aware about that, but this double ferrule and all that have been, uh, have gone out of the, uh, of the favor. So it has to be single, uh, optimistically. Uh, this, this I'm not aware actually, but those things are secondary in any case. Right now, when you get the rake, you will know uh, those things are passive. You don't, okay. unless there is a, there is a design problem. We had this double ferrule fitting. There was a design problem. It was working out and all that probably. This is why you are asking, right? Am I yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I think those things have been well understood and uh, it is not going to be repeated uh, again in the new fittings. I'm very sure of it. So unless there is a, there is a design problem and inherent uh, uh, failures related to that, normal maintenance, we, we shouldn't be bothering about that. Uh, right now, so far, there is no problem. Kilometer already do rake chal hai, chal chuka hai. They have already completed uh, 15 lakh kilometer uh, between them, two rakes put together. So sir, it's, it's fit, very good. Huh. Sir, are they fitted with single ferrule fitting? I, I understand it is single, but I am not very okay. sure about that. I'll have to even inquire. Ma, ma ja karke sab dekh karke aaya, lekin ye gai, probably you can say. Sir, uh, because earlier there was misconception that uh, single ferrule fittings is for only for stationary application and a double ferrule fitting is very good and it is for moving application. Because it will better uh, be able to take care of that uh, vibrations and other things. Uh, although, okay. It is, it is part of the design. It is part of the design and it is part of the dead mechanism. It is not something that is going to be opened and closed, open and closed very frequently. Okay, so sir. we will see about that. Okay, sir. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. So now uh, let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, we call it elephant in the room, the most important thing, right? Uh, that is your brake panel and how your EP brake works. Now we understand how the main air reservoir is uh, carried to all the coaches, right? How the compressors work, uh, how the main, uh, how the MR pipe is charged. Now let's see how the brake system work. So main function is service brake. So what is service brake? It is your normal brake application. We call it service brake, right? Your brake application, release of your normal brake application that is your service brake when you start the train you release the brake when you want to stop the train you apply the brake when you want to control the train then you uh, apply the brake with uh, lesser force and that kind of thing that is all part of the service now there is emergency brake you press one button you don't have to move the handle to emergency position in case of locomotive we know that uh, uh, you have to, you know, move the handle to emergency position, right? In this case, service brake is by T handle, master controller, right? Emergency brake is from a simple button. Press that, it is emergency brake. So there is an emergency brake application, right? And then, okay, where is my uh, arrow? Okay. And then there is uh, this, uh, this thing happens, say, Now, brake pressure limitation based on the train load, coach load, I should say. So if the coach is lighter, then the brake pressure should be limited. There should be a reduction. Otherwise, one of the main reason for uh, shelling in LHB was one of these. You, re you remember that people who are maintaining the LHB coaches may be well aware about the wheel shelling problem. It is still there. The, we call it spanning or uh, shelling also. Uh, another term is spanning. Uh, 
another term is real selling right remember anybody lhb site now Sir. now it is still present but to a much lesser degree right so one of the reason for break selling was piggybacking means the amount of breaking force is constant irrespective of the uh, of the coach uh, weight so jo halka coach hai halka coach hai usme bhi aap utna hi break laga rahe hain jo bhari coach hai usme bhi aap utna hi laga rahe hain to bhari coach ka kya hoga ki uska apna break system to usko rokega but not that effectively so it will be you know loading itself on to the lighter coach also so individually its break application will not be sufficient for the heavier coaches and it will be you know leaning it will be leading it will be loading uh, on to the lighter coaches so the lighter coaches mein kya hoga wheel selling may develop yes or no because it is the sir. the yeah yes sir it will be it will be you know retarding for itself and other coaches also so in this case in now there were other reasons also for selling and nobody knows actually clearly ki how it has been sorted out but it has sorted out we have done something good that way so uh, in this case if it coach is heavier the break application will be higher if the coach is lighter the break application will be lighter there is a, a twin dye from separate valve is available for that we will see about that okay sir i have one question yes sir uh, currently we have uh, brake caliper with the two brake rigging ratio like uh, 2.17 for lighter coaches and 2.48 for uh, heavier coaches sir uh, what is the uh, in that uh, i have to ask one question uh, what is the brake rigging ratio it is number 2.48 2.17 but i don't understand what is brake rigging it is rigging it is ratio. unit see brake rigging ratio that is lever ratio you are asking about these are unit brake system these are unit brake system there is a single lever there is not multiple of lever involved in that it is similar to your uh, lhb coaches in that caliper is hanging in this yes, caliper sir. is actually horizontal so uh, from the fulcrum from the fulcrum the center of that uh, uh, that uh, brake shoe pin and the center of that uh, this thing brake cylinder pin Uh, needs to be measured probably, but uh, right now I am not aware about that. But it is a it, there is a single lever, there okay. is not multiple of lever. It is horizontal. I will show you the photograph, okay. uh, and uh, in the next iteration we can measure it. it. You just measure it, you get the ratio. You okay. measure from the center point to the brake side me or to cylinder side me. What ratio did you get? One is to one point two or one is to one point three or four. We will see. Okay, sir. Right? Okay, sir. It is very very simple mechanism. There are not multiple of uh, 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 levers that are involved. Single lever. That's it. Okay. okay. And each each uh, uh, disc. There is no disc actually. There are two discs which are mounted on both side of the wheel. I think it must have been covered in the bogey. Bogey वाले में cover हो गया क्या? इसमें जो है break disc separately नहीं है. Break disc इसमें क्या किया है? व्हील व्हील का जो वेब है उसके दोनों तरफ लगा करके टाइट किया हुआ है देर आर एटीन बोल्ट एंड यूजिंग दोज बोल्ट इट इज माउंटेड ऑन टू द व्हील इट सेल्फ एंड देर इज ए यूनिट ब्रेक सॉरी देर इज ए यूनिट ब्रेक सिलेंडर एंड कैलिपर सो ईच कैलिपर के लिए वन वन ब्रेक सिलेंडर है दैट मीन्स देर इज ए इक्वल नंबर ऑफ ब्रेक सिलेंडर एज मेनी देर आर व्हील्स So, जितने व्हील डिस्क है जितने व्हील डिस्क है उतने ब्रेक सिलेंडर है ओके ओके सर राइट द लास्ट वन इज रिडंडेंट इमरजेंसी ब्रेक प्रेशर जनरेशन वाया सर्विस ब्रेक सर्किट एंड आई एक्सप्लेन दैट ओके नाउ कंपोनेंट्स क्या क्या कंपोनेंट है डिजिटल कंट्रोल लूप दैट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट जस्ट यू डोंट हैव टू रिमेंबर और एनीथिंग राइट this is basically solenoid based uh, 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 pilot pressure generation right uh, uh, there is a emergency brake valve of course it is on driver's uh, desk there is a relay valve because using solenoid you control only a pilot pressure and then that pilot pressure goes to you know similar to c2 relay valve kind of thing in loco uh, where the main air reservoir in proportion to the pilot valve main air reservoir is released to the brake cylinders 
Then there is a pressure rel limiting valve, right? Pressure limiting valve, pressure sensors for TCMS, and of course, double check valve that is only a part of the circuit. Uh, okay, hold on. Where is that? Huh. Now, the last photograph was snapped by me from the rear side, the pipe connection, that bottom one. This is called brake skid, right? It is called brake skid. It is part of pneumatic skid. Now, all the coaches, all the coaches have three pneumatic skids. Absolutely all the coaches. Every individual coaches have three, three brake, uh, pneumatic skids. Two of the pneumatic skids are required for feeding your air springs. So, bogi laga hua hai, wahan wahan par ek -ek, just next to the bogey, there is an air skid. Skid means it's a, it's a frame. It's a frame that is mounted onto the under frame of the coach. If you want, you remove the whole frame down. So, there is, there is a separate frame. Just my sare component fitted hai, and the whole thing is lifted and mounted onto the underside of your coach. So that is why they call it a skit. So three pneumatic skit, one, one, two, matlab, uh, one for each bogey. So do to go chala gaya. One is brake skit, this one, right? There you can see there is a brake control unit, BCU, right? BCU is two, one left side, one right side. Can you see that? Basically, it is redundant. I already told you the brake system may a lot of redundancy exist. Okay, uh, B2 and B1, they, they basically are for, uh, one is for parking brake. The B1 is parking brake, B2 is your normal brake. Uh, and we will see that. The bottom most is your uh, pneumatic connections. Okay. The, the system architecture, the overview. Now this we have already discussed. Let me uh, just remind you. And I already told you when it is block diagram, when it is block diagram, never assume that size of the block in your diagram actually represents the size of the component. The block, block diagram may, your block may be large, but actual component may be small. Your block may be small here, but actual component may be large and that's true here also. Okay. Now here you can see this is your motor car controller unit right this is computer basically it is two of them are available in each now right now we are looking at it just uh, for the sake of brake system because your digital signal through ecn network this top green line where is my pen okay this top green line And I keep losing my mouse uh, if it goes. Okay, now let me get my pen again. Yeah, to remember where the mouse is. So this one, probably you may remember, that is your ECN, right? It's a network, digital uh, network where the uh, the signal is received in the digital form, in the packet form, right? And this, this, this parallel information goes to two parallel computers in each coach. So these computers, uh, they depend, uh, they're, they're slightly different from your normal coach or trailing coach to motor coach. The reason is, in case of motor coach, the same computers also uh, control your traction converters, right? In case of trailing coach, they don't. Okay. The brake application signal goes to your brake control unit here. They are again two redundant. If one, any one of them is malfunctioning, the other keeps working. With a feedback to TCMS, which generates a fault, uh, which uh, locks a fault signal. If I, uh, uh, there is a problem in one of the brake control unit, and so the maintenance people can uh, look for it. Okay, let uh, I lost my mouse again. Hold on, where it is? Acha, here it is. Okay. Right. Now in brake control unit, there are two solenoid valves. 
Now that is not for redundancy, one for charging and one for exhausting. So basically they work just like your, uh, just like your, uh, 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 this thing, dump wall, the pressure, it keeps on regulating between, to find out which works, right? So on, off, on, off, on, off, charging and discharging by that and feedback through the pressure sensor yeah, the computer can control precisely uh, what is the output pressure. The solenoid will have input 10 kg and output depending upon whatever is the loco pilot wants to apply the brake. Minimum reduction, service, the range of service, full service and so on. So the you earlier you used to control the brake pipe, you used to reduce the brake pipe pressure. Here you increase the brake cylinder pressure taking pressure just from the main air reservoir using solenoid wall. Now how it is, Acha, okay, uh, let us uh, complete the rest of the circuit and then we will see. So this, uh, these two solenoids create pilot air pressure, right? This pilot air pressure goes to your relay wall. From relay wall, main air reservoir is released to your brake cylinders, right? This, this happens. This happens all the time. In, it, is, it is just repeating in other, uh, and these are pressure sensors. These are pressure sensors. So uh, brake cylinder pressure, then again that feeds back into your TCMS through same uh, brake controller unit. Okay. So the same thing, there is, there is no difference if you look at uh, uh, the actual brake application, right? The only difference is your uh, uh, the motorized coaches and non-motorized coaches. The difference is because uh, the regenerative braking. In case of uh, motorized coaches, you have regenerative braking. So only part of the brake application is pneumatic and a part of the brake application is through the regenerative mechanism. In case of trailing coaches, since there are no motors, the total brake application is only using pneumatic means, right? Okay. Any questions so far here, till here? Anybody? Come on. Uh, uh, regenerative, regenerative braking and pneumatic braking is applied uh, simultaneously, na, sir, when a uh, driver applies brake, amount of braking. Uh... Yes. Uh, probably it must have been explained ki pneumatic uh, uh, this thing uh, uh, electronic uh, sorry the regenerative braking is applied first and then it is calculated ki how much more braking is required the rest is covered by the pneumatic brakes uh, it is kind of that but the computers are so fast you can actually see it is it is simultaneous so the computer system actually uh, the, there, there is a intelligent they call it adi right intelligent card so there there is there is a logic electronic or computer logic built into uh, in this brake system so where there are motorized coaches that electronic cards decides ki how much of uh, a pneumatic brake is required and how much of the regenerative brake can be applied can be applied based on the existing condition so what are the condition condition is oh voltage Condition is what is the train speed because regenerative braking is uh, effective only up to uh, 60 to some extent up to 80 kilometer per hour. That's all. Beyond that, regenerative braking is almost negligible. It is it is all pneumatic. And again, uh, in case of reg it is not dynamic braking. The people who are uh, uh, conversant with locomotive are well aware about the dynamic braking. Yes or no? Anybody from loco side? Yes, I need yeah. In case of dynamic braking, uh, you can apply sustained dynamic braking. That means if you are going down the, uh, say, a, a gradient, you, you, you don't need to apply the pneumatic brake at all, right? Unless the grades are too, too sharp, you, you can control the train speed uh, by only dynamic brake. And it is, it is suggested to reduce the you know, uh, wear and tear on brakes. You, you control the train speed only by db and you can keep it sustained for uh, unless your system you know throws you a fault key it is overheated and all that 
you can you can sustain the db dynamic break for 5 10 15 minutes it is not recommended to go beyond that because by the time you will be anyhow uh, coasting to a play uh, 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 this thing uh, the alignment which is uh, without gradient so so db you can sustain for 10 15 even slightly more than that here here it is not like that there, there are brake chopper registers are available that is but those are very very weak that is only to take some transient uh, uh, spike in voltage or uh, I'll, I'll explain that here regenerative braking when you apply that there must be some train in the section to utilize that number one okay number two the amount of regeneration is is not exactly you know very high only up to 25% by design. Actually, it goes up to 25%, but it averages out something around 15, 18%, right? That much of power only you can uh, you can you can regenerate and feed it to the OHE, right? Now, why I say there must be some train in the section? See, your OHE is divided in sections, phase-wise, right? So each each section is fed by one of the feeder station outside. Right? So, your main grid se feeder station mein jayega, feeder station se aapka wo particular section will be powered. Now, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot feed the electricity back into the section, which goes to your feeder unit and back to grid. No, your your feeder units are not uh, that way. They are not designed that way. That's only one way. That means if you try to feed the electricity back to OHE, there must be some train in the same section, which will utilize that. So if there are two trains, there will be a sharper voltage drop. The system will try to feed back uh, uh, the electricity back to OHE. And if there is no reception there, then for very short time, the brake chopper registers will come into play and discharge that extra buildup, uh, uh, the energy that you have in your uh, supply back system. But other than that, they, they don't engage like uh, DB brake, no. And then the whole thing will be isolated if there is no receptor, and then uh, it will be pure uh, pneumatic. So that is built into the system logic. Uh, I hope that uh, answers your uh, uh, question. Any sir, any other question? Full field, sir. Full field, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, ji. So uh, basically, there are four units here: MC, TC, MC, DTC. Uh, you can see the brake systems are concerned. Uh, pneumatic systems are concerned they are they are they are similar so uh, what i was telling about the same it will be used in preference to the ep break right this one in motor cars so first it will try that regenerative braking right in preference to the uh, ep brake the EP brake will follow that pneumatic part. But again, there are a lot of conditions where this uh, regenerative braking can be engaged. If those conditions are fulfilled, it will be engaged. If those conditions, and to certain extent, with if those conditions are not fulfilled, then it is only EP brake. Right? Now, we already, uh, we already uh, discussed about this in initially, and uh, one by one, we will take up these things, right? In short, because... Uh, by 11 o'clock, we must complete our class because your uh, your uh, valedictory is from 11 o'clock. So half an hour is still there. I don't know half an hour is there or how, many, how much time? See that? Yeah, a little less than that. Uh, 20 more minutes. But we will cover uh, your uh, major break part in that 20 minutes. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. This is service break. Now normal service break. Let me put this somewhere else. Okay, here. And where is my pen? Okay. Now I already told you whenever you see, whenever you see that blue color line in your schematic, you just assume it is it is uh, uh, main main uh, mark, mark. reservoir, right? Uh, Eight point five to ten kg, right? Okay. Uh, for for our own sake of uh, uh, matlab, uh, uh, just understanding, let us call it ten kg. It can vary. There is a there, there is a range within that. It is all okay. Let's call it 10 kg. So 10 kg pressure is available in all these blue lines. Now, 
these are two solenoids as i was talking about a1 and a2 a2 is exhaustor a1 is charger so a1 opens your your uh, brake cylinder pressure is charged a2 opens it is discharged so they work in conjunction in fact if you if you practically see they both work uh, free, uh, uh, with uh, with rapid succession on off on off on off on off like that they work both so that way uh, very precise uh, pressure control can be achieved in uh, their output where is my this is another this is really a big problem with this webex uh, particularly your uh, pen control so okay let me try that again these two solenoid this is your uh, main air reservoir it is coming from here and this is your output right here the output goes here now this one is actually this is uh, the other side this is again main air reservoir the other line right the, uh, the the arrow that i am drawing but this is emergency solenoid this emergency solenoid is uh, operated by the loco pilot in case of emergency in case of emergency there is no no regulation straight away main air reservoir is uh, allowed to go into bc uh, pilot pressure site but finally okay that that is extreme emergency emergency is emergency of course so we will not we will not uh, uh, right now discuss this we will discuss next right we will not discuss this so normal your normal uh, flow of air for brake application for your service brake application is through here through the solenoid through here uh, there is a n is a test port and it goes to a double check one there is another one i i have already told you that there is a 5 kg pressure bp pipe there is a bp pipe also na next by rule also it is required and for uh, limping mode for towing mode right when when let us say your train is dead your train is dead you are pulling the whole train with a locomotive locomotive aage lag gaya now locomotive doesn't care about your ep brake and this that locomotive has got only brake pipe yes or no yes sir so locomotive should be able to control because it is being pulled by locomotive and ye 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 cover hua hai ki nahi ki tra, tra, train uh, jo train set hai uske dono taraf h type uh, cbc coupler hai at the extreme end बीच में तो आपका डेलनर कपलर है कोच से कोच के बीच में आपका डेलनर कपलर है लेकिन एकदम एक्सट्रीम एंड में आपका सीबीसी कपलर है यस yes, सर है ना यस सर पूरा का पूरा ट्रेन जो है आप कुछ नहीं तो आप लोकोमोटिव लगा के चला सकते हैं ठीक है तो लोकोमोटिव यू कैन कपल यूजिंग सिंपल सीबीसी कपलर एट द एंड एंड ऑल्सो न्यूमेटिक कनेक्शन सो यू कैन यू कैन कनेक्ट द मेन एयर इक्विलाइजिंग पाइप एंड यू कैन कनेक्ट द ब्रेक पाइप so this using brake pipe if you want to control in case of limp mode auto brake valve can be limp mode means sab kuch fail ho gaya to bhi auto brake valve can be applied by the loco pilot one or if the whole rake is being pulled by the locomotive and locomotive applies the brake by changing the brake pipe pressure it can still be controlled and this one comes from here right so there is a stv it comes from the stv there is stvt stv is nothing but distributor valve a distributor valve of uh, uh, nor is it's different design but the purpose is same like distributor valve it comes from that uh, uh, let me and then it comes to here double check valve right so whatever pressure is coming that pressure gets released to further uh, ahead and this one you are looking at this one this one is it visible to you yes, yes sir yeah this is pressure adjustment valve this is pressure adjustment valve if you see that it is coming from air spring pressure this one it is coming from the signal pressure signal basically air pressure is coming from air spring and higher the air spring is higher this pressure is and then based on that there are twin diaphragm based on that uh, the brake pressure is modulated so higher the air spring pressure is higher will be brake cylinder pressure lower the spring pressure is lower will be the brake cylinder pressure and now pilot pilot air pressure this is the brake cylinder pressure it could be 1 kg it could be 2 kg it could be 3 kg maximum 3.8 kg 
up to that much uh, pressure can be released to the brake cylinder. This is the relay valve. This is the relay valve. We, you, uh, from one side, you apply the uh, brake cylinder pressure. Other side, in the same proportion, in the same proportion, to you, you give it one kg uh, uh, pilot air pressure, only one kg of MR will be released. This goes to the brake cylinder. It goes to the BC. Okay, not very good writing, but uh, probably it may be visible, right? Clear, everybody? This is how uh, your uh, uh, this thing works. Uh, the, this is just a schematic as of right now. So A1 and A2, these two solenoids are very, very important. And there is, of course, one emergency solenoid E. So this, you can, you can understand, you can understand, uh, hold on a second, where is my, no, not this, not this. Huh. You can understand this whole thing is inside the panel. They, this is mounted outside, right? This, this portion is mounted outside. So these are three different cabinets. We are three different uh, fittings we are looking at. So now let us look into those things. Okay. Okay. Okay, it is just a uh, just an indication how it happens. Okay. So this is this is your controller, bottom side. This is your master controller. It is from the top actually. Uh, it is T handle master controller. You press towards the front, then it goes into motoring mode. You pull towards the loco pilot towards you, and then it goes into braking mode. Center position is neutral. This side of neutral position is braking. That side of neutral position is uh, motoring. So both you cannot do. You cannot motor. You cannot uh, uh, try to move the train and apply the brake. It is possible in locomotive, not here. So master controller, then it goes to the BCU for calculation of BC, how much is required. Then uh, it goes to DCL loop, then relay wall, then brake cylinder pressure, same thing which we uh, just uh, discussed, right? So this is how propagation of brake system takes place. This. I'm really miffed about this. Uh, uh, the pen control on uh, WebEx, okay. Now these are the real valves. It is available in uh, BCU, right? The pressure sensor and two magnet valves, A and A2, A1 and A2, right? So this is called digital control room. This is part of that. And this sol for controlling the solenoid, you need electrical signal. That electrical signal comes from the electronic board. Uh, we will see about that in five minutes. So just understand there are two solenoid, a pressure sensor and an electronic board, which gets feedback from the pressure sensor and actuates two of the solenoid in order to apply the brake. And again, it is proportion to your handle movement. How much driver moves the handle towards the braking side that much more uh, brake cylinder pressure is generated, right? And again, brake cylinder pressure further gets modulated based on the load of that coach. How it is done? It is done based on there is a, a biasing system. There is a dual diaphragm wall which takes uh, say, uh, uh, the pressure reading from the uh, air spring. And air spring pressure is again dependent on the coach weight. Heavier the coach is, more air, sp air spring pressure would exist. So, okay. Any question? So we go. Okay, this is for brake chopper. I think this circuit is uh, too much. I think I got another circuit in next one. This is the propulsion circuit. In fact, uh, uh, when whenever you are in, whenever you are in uh, dynamic brake mode, your motors are working as generator. There may be some doubt ki how three phase uh, AC induction motor can be made generator. Well, we can understand uh, the function of generator right from the uh, generator, DC generator that is, no? 
there, there is a there is a field, there is armature, there is a collector, commutator, and then uh, how AC induction motor can be used as generator. Basically, uh, you try to move, uh, rotate any motor beyond its synchronous speed, it starts working like a generator. Any induction motor, you you forcefully move beyond its synchronous speed. Synchronous speed is the highest speed that it can rotate. At, at synchronous speed, torque is zero. So it will always be less than synchronous speed. If you go more than synchronous speed, then it starts acting like a generator. So, uh, and how we do that? We change the frequency. So we change the synchronous speed. The motor speed is constant. We change the synchronous. Speed. We bring the, below the motor speed and then we got our generator. So now, uh, there is my pen again. Okay. So, uh, from motor it goes to uh, array. from motor it goes to uh, same IGBT unit which works as a rectifier this time in reverse direction. All the IGBT units starts working like a rectifier, and from that it charges the DC link, right? In case there is a charging of DC link but there is no reception, then only this uh, brake chopper register comes into play. Otherwise, brake chopper registers don't work. Normally, all the time it will be working. Practically, theoretically, it should be only when there is an abnormal condition. But that are abnormal conditions happen every time you start uh, 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 applying the brake. So, uh, because there will be calibration. So, uh, it happens then there is a uh, capacitor bank. And these are rectifier bar inverters. So, in reverse direction, they work as an inverter. In the normal, they work as a rectifier. In reverse direction, they work as an inverter. So DC link is again converted to single phase AC. Now single phase AC is actually fed into uh, this line transformer, which is again stepped up. And after stepping up, then it goes to OHE. So this is how uh, our uh, regenerative braking works. It is in very short. Uh, in fact, uh, I think this was part of your propulsion uh, uh, circuit, uh, that course, uh, so, so the class. So we are not going much into that. It is the same thing again. So uh, there is there are two current transformers, basically to measure that how much is we are discharging through the uh, brake register. It's a very small unit. It's only if I remember correctly, it is 719 kilowatt. 719 kilowatt. Uh, uh, and it can be charged maximum up to 2.5 seconds. It can be charged only up to 2.5 seconds. It can be loaded up to only 2.5 seconds. Beyond that, uh, you have to reduce that at full load. Uh, so uh, it is it is only to take care of abnormal condition. Initially, immediately you start uh, 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 applying your dynamic or regenerative braking uh, just to balance it, calibrate uh, your output and uh, whatever is being received by the any other system on the same section, uh, just to balance that, calibrate that, uh, some uh, some some energy needs to be dissipated there. It is for that. It is not like the DB grid, absolutely not. Okay. Uh, let me go back to my pen. Again, this my annotation. Okay, right. Now emergency brake. So there is a emergency brake wire loop. Basically, it's a it's a simple uh, electrical uh, circuit which you close it right. Uh, master controller make button hota hai, usko aap dabaiye, right. Uh, then emergency uh, brake loop jo hai open ho gaya. So then uh, emergency brake valve will be de-energized and make the emergency brake pressure work. Wo maine jo dikhaya tha pichli baar circuit wahi hai. So let me let me uh, just uh, show you how it works. Uh, Okay, so there is a there is a there is, is it visible to you all? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, huh? So there is a separate button, emergency stop. So press that, then all the brakes are applied with full force, right? So in this case, there is no valve. There is a button. Okay. Now how that happens? I think there is a uh, the circuit is here only. I already told you, I think there is no separate circuit. Told you here only. Uh, 
once again i can just so i think i have already told you this main air reservoir it comes here and this is the emergency uh, uh, solenoid then complete main air reservoir is released here and of course there won't be anything here through the stv the all the pressure really gets released here the pressure is so high actually uh, the brakes will be jammed uh, of course there is a there is a of course the wheels will not uh, slide because there is a wheel slip protection device wspa is available na wsp is available so it doesn't matter how much you break you apply the uh, rate of stopping of train will be limited by wsp it will not allow the wheels to be damaged right so in in case of emergency the pressure build up is sudden the brake application is sudden but again it will be slight protected so uh, this is the function of uh, at this keep losing my pen so okay coming back to here towing brake now this towing brake this is by another locomotive right this works from another locomotive or a towing wall so agar aap aapke train mein in your train if everything has gone bad all the electronic circuits have uh, you have lost but you have mr compressors are working you should still be able to apply the brake that should never happen because you have so much of redundancy built into that two normal channels and one frequency right but utna bhi agar kharab ho gaya so then you have a separate uh, towing wall i told you already it is available on the driver's desk but at one corner they are not supposed to operate it in normal condition it is a auto wall it operates by modulating the brake pipe pressure that you have right so that brake pipe pressure that brake pipe pressure can be changed by the locomotive ye ye coupling ho gaya bahar ka bahar se aapne locomotive lagaya yahan par then you can change the brake pipe pressure uh, by the locomotive or you can change the brake pipe pressure uh, by a uh, towing valve which is here ye yeah. right so how it works so the this is this is 5 kg bp that yellow color pipe is 5 kg bp so what you are doing you are venting it out right you are venting it out and you are stopping the charge so you stopping the charge and vent out the bp then your bp reduces when your bp reduces actually your 5 kg reduces that is sensed by this stv i told you already if i remember that uh, stv is just like distributor valve in distributor valve we reduce the bp what happens it uh, charges the brake cylinder pressure pilot pressure right the same thing happens here it's a physical valve right and this uh, charges the brake cylinder pilot pressure it comes here through the double check valve it goes to that same uh, differential wall twin diaphragm wall right pressure adjusted and then goes to the relay wall and the brakes are applied this is going to brake cylinder clear everybody yes sir it it you can do uh, either by the towing wall on your uh, control desk or it can also be operated by the loco uh, which is you know uh, which is towing your uh, uh, train so okay again okay this one was okay uh parking brake straight away i will go to the uh, circuit and i will show you how the parking brake works now i think uh, in bogi control meri baat hui thi inse hamare ayub ji se ki he told that uh, uh, parking brake physical location he will explain so there is a spring loaded parking brake available diagonally in each bogey so how many parking brakes are there half the number of wheels in any rake are fitted with parking brake they are not one or two or only in the power car no the parking brakes are available in half the wheels in a rake 50% of the wheels are fitted with parking brake so what is parking brake basically it is a spring loaded brake system where the spring is always trying to apply the brake so what you do basically you 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 keep on air pressure on to keep the spring released agar aapka air pressure gaya parking brake lag jayega mr pressure gaya parking brake lag jayega 
आपका सिस्टम से ब्रेक एयर लीक आउट हो गया पार्किंग ब्रेक लग जाएगा मतलब इफ द सिस्टम इज डेड बाय एनी चांस द पार्किंग ब्रेक्स विल गेट विल गेट अप्लाइड ऑटोमेटिकली सो इट इज वेरी वेरी सेफ सिस्टम एंड आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड यू मे बी हैविंग सम क्वेश्चन कि ये तो मेंटेनेंस का प्रॉब्लम हो जाएगा हेड हो जाएगा रनिंग टाइम में इट विल क्रिएट प्रॉब्लम एंड यू वुड बी राइट बट इफ सिस्टम इज डिजाइन प्रॉपरली and sufficient safety uh, checks are built into that it should not be a, a maintenance or the operations problem but that still remains uh, you know uh, of concern so any time you don't have uh, air the parking brakes will get applied so how you keep the parking brakes released so how you keep the parking brake released basically uh, the circuit is this there is my pen again so we are uh, reaching the end of our session uh, we should be able to complete by uh, 11 o'clock so i think it is already 11 o'clock this is the last actually uh, slide there are some additional item horn uh, and uh, double uh, yeah this is your main air reservoir this comes through here and through another wall and this keeps uh, your uh, uh, parking bay brake release circuits charged all the time this red color it is it is kept charged all the time just to keep your parking brakes released you need to have pressure here if in any way if you release this pressure then the counter force for the parking brake springs are removed this springs will press against the uh, brake caliper and apply the parking brake so you can see very well the control remains you know uh, by default if there is no mr definitely parking brake uh, where is my pen again yeah if you if you if you release the mr you leak out the mr you uh, reduce the pressure parking brakes will come into uh, uh, into effect by default but how you actually apply by button right how do you apply the parking brake by button so that is actually you exhaust your uh, uh, this is one of uh, where is my pen through here actually you exhaust the uh, uh, the pressure which is built as uh, to release the parking brake you exhaust this pressure and then your parking brakes are applied so for applying simply one solenoid is uh, uh, one solenoid is actuated and your parking brakes are applied you uh, deactivate the solenoid your parking brakes are released again so okay uh, this is double check valve this, this is this is the solenoid okay so this is about it any question here it is very simple mechanism actually you your system is continuously working to keep the parking brakes released right your system stops working your parking brakes applied so uh, this is these are these are the solenoids which actually actuate the parking brake it is in b02 right uh, on the brake panel the brake mechanism we have already discussed that uh, it is brake cylinder pressure but why why it is important here the brake cylinder pressure is that green one that red one is a separate connection to keep your parking brakes released you can see that uh, the red one goes to diagonally to only to two uh, brake cylinders but that green green one is going to all of your brake cylinders so how that green one uh, you, we have seen brake circuit already from the relay valve uh, the pressure comes here right the brake cylinder pressure it it comes here from the relay valve and from here these are the valves which are again solenoid based these are dump valve i already told you uh, we discussed at the start itself that everybody is aware about the wheel slide protection device there is there are dump valves so these dump valves they 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 permit the uh, air brake uh, uh, bc brake cylinder pressure into physical brake cylinders right or in order to release that they stop the uh, brake cylinder pressure that is uh, from the relay 
and then exhaust the brake cylinder pressure based on electrical signal in order to in order to in order to uh, avoid the wheel slip so these are the dump walls so it is uh, uh, dump wall corrected uh, slide protected and then brake cylinders are uh, uh, actuated and the brakes are applied so now this is the physical i think somebody was asking what is the ratio so if you if you actually look here that needs to be measured and that measurement i don't have actually this is the fulcrum right and this axis this axis is actually uh, brake cylinder actuation uh, uh, it happens in this axis so if you measure this if you measure that and take its ratio to here uh, you will get lever ratio but anyhow yeah but that measurement i don't have here so this is the brake this is the brake cylinder yeah here there is a brake cylinder this is the body and then this 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 two this two caliper part they apply the brake here right i think this is already covered so i'm just uh, uh, skipping over that so okay uh, any question so far this is your uh, last part sir in case of parking brakes ha ah, ji uh, sir in case of parking brakes yeah uh, is there any fault detection uh, system inbuilt in that yes uh, actually parking brake pressure because your air pressure should always be available to keep the parking brakes released okay yes or no yes sir <laughs> There is a, there is a pressure sensor at each parking brake location, which feeds back to brake control unit that parking brakes are in released condition. If any of the place, if the parking brake uh, air pressure sensor <coughs> doesn't doesn't pick up uh, the feedback signal, that means parking brakes are either applied or sensor is defective. That feeds into TCMS. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, so local have pilot will have indication. Any more question? This is the last part. There is one power board. It supplies the power. Now, these are actually the boards which control your all the actuators. Right? This is the network board. Nor uses within the same basic unit. All the brake units are connected to each other, each other using a separate network. That is actually a control area network, CAN bus. It is called CAN bus, CAN bus, control area network bus using serial connections. Right? So this is their networking board. And all the brains are, <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, sometimes it is. And all the brains are here. This is called it CID boards. All the logic. So there is a power board. There are actuator boards. There is a networking board, and there is a computer, real computer. And it is mounted inside the driving end. Me jo apka cabinet laga hua hai, it is inside that. It is available in each coach. It is. So these are the power unit. This is its brain. Basically, these are the, uh, this is the network. There are pin description. These are the, these are the unit which actually control uh, uh, the actuator and take feedback from the sensor. <coughs> uh, this is our wheel slide protection. It is similar to <laughs> LHV. I'm sorry, I had little cuff. So we are at the end of the session, right? Horn and double. Uh, so this is about that. If you want, we can, it's very simple. Uh, this is double needle, locomotive may be here. So each gauge, each gauge is used to indicate uh, two different pressures. That's all, there is two different input. Uh, you connect two pipes and it shows different pressure. There are needles which are <laughs> connected. Uh, to different pressure and colored differently. This is horn. 
there are two simple solenoid valves. Main air reservoir is uh, used to operate the horn valves. That's all. Question. Yes, please. Question. Last, because we are at the end of the session in any case. We wanted to complete by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It is 11 o'clock <laughs> and 10 minutes. Sir, in case of regenerative breaking, is it possible that uneven breaking happens? What do you mean by uneven breaking? Like uh, where WSP com should come into function. WSP is the brake cylinder side. Yes, sir. That is what, uh, why I'm asking that in case of air brake, WSP can manage uneven braking or some in any abnormality is there. But when <laughs> no, no, okay, let me, I, I understood that. Uh, let, let me explain that. Let me clarify that part. WSP is not uh, uh, there. WSP is not provided to take care of any uneven braking, though it can. See, the adhesion between the wheel and rail will keep on changing in all the wheels because there is a certain play, there is a horizontal play, right? Uh, there is a hunting, wheels going left and right, the contact area and contact point is changing between rail and the wheel. So ad real adhesion is varying a lot in all the wheels. So <laughs> your brake application is standard, but your grip on the rail is varying. So if your grip on the rail is less, the wheel will slide very easily, wheel will slip very easily. So in order to reduce that, in case of there is a slip, the, you reduce the air pressure. It is to take care of that. Actual brake cylinder pressure will be quite stable across the board, right? The same thing is here also. Same thing is here also. So purpose of WSP is not to take care of uneven braking. Uh, hold on a second, please. Anything? Oh, okay. Question. Question answer. Dean sir join kar rahe hai paanch minute mein. To humare paas paanch minute abhi bhi hai. So the WSP is not to take care of uh, uh, uneven braking, though it can, but the real purpose is to uh, avoid the wheel slip when there is not sufficient friction, not sufficient adhesion between the wheel and the rail. Am I clear? Yes, sir. The same thing happens here also. Of course, if you look at the WSP here and there, some mounting and those things are slightly changed. They have made it little more robust. Uh, how the phonic wheel is mounted and a purana design and naya design may have for a change hai, to just make it little more robust but the function is absolutely same so normally uneven braking won't take place uh, it is uh, to take care of the friction adhesion and uh, to avoid the wheel slip any other question please yes, yes sir one question sir yeah hello ha ha bolie, bolie. Sir, when loco is coupled to this formation, you mean to say yeah, we are connecting MR, MR equalizing pan, pipe and BP pipe? Uh, yes. No, no feed pipe? No feed pipe. Okay, sir. thank you. Sir, one more thing. Yes. For actuation of this parking brake, how much yeah. MR should be dropped? What is the minimum MR should be retained? 4 kg. Okay, if the MR pressure is goes less than 4 kg, parking brake will come into effect. It will come into effect. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. 4 or 4.5, if I remember correctly. Uh, it is noted in my diary. It is not in this uh, presentation. Uh, Dean, sir, has joined. Uh, sir, it was just our uh, question-answer session was going on. Uh, good morning, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, we have already reached the end of our session. So, uh, if any other questions are, otherwise we will just, uh, uh, we will uh, 